Joe, the, uh, Ev the Evil Dead franchise is very unique as in like the first two and the show are all like kind of horror themed. Uh, and Army of Darkness sticks out specifically because of its, it's more, like you said, adventurous and fantasy. And you really, you got to open up a lot more. I think Sam Wormy quoted you in an interview that some of your best work you've ever done was Army of Darkness. What was your process through that? Like in terms of it, when coming from the horror genre and going to an action adventure genre, like did that open anything up for you creatively? Were you able to experiment more rather than just have a bunch of reverse strings and hard bangs? Let's see what happened during that three and a half weeks. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> the, uh, 25 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> or, or longer. I mean, it was obvious to me that it had taken a left turn. It reminded me of watching Harryhausen films on Saturday morning as a kid. Is That's what it reminded me of. There were, as always with Ash, there's opportunities for humor. As always, I was inclined to play the straight man, except when things get ridiculous and there's 30 little ashes running around <laughs> and, and, you know, doing in a cartoon fashion. Mischievous Three Stooges, classic Sam Raimi yeah, nonsense. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So there's a little bit of that there where we go along with it. But yeah, I, I think I was... Were, were there anything, Steve, that you wanted to use from the Evil Dead franchise that maybe you wanted to literally just rip or just kind of copy with your own spin on it and throw it in, but weren't able to because of license rights or what have you? No, that wasn't the approach as much. I was more interested in just being inspired by Joe and his just incredible body of work that he's created. And I thought it would be cool to collaborate and create something new and to just sort of pursue <laughs> this new sound for this new entity of Evil Dead the game. Um, each thing, like you said, each each one of the Evil Dead projects Films, yeah. ha has its own sound. You know, the, the you said Army of Darkness is such a departure. It just has its own sound. The original has its own sound. Um, and I, to me, I thought it was cool. It was like, okay, especially since Evil Dead the game combines all of it, and there are, I don't want to give too much away of the plot points, but they're, they're cool before people play, but there are, there are, it's sort of a cool combination of all the Evil Dead universes coming together. So to me, it was like, oh, okay, how can I draw a little bit from each of those musically and sonically rather than licensing the pieces directly and sort of rehashing something that people have already experienced? It was like, how can we make it a 2.0 version where I try to just be inspired by the brilliance of what Joe had already done and then try to reinterpret it in my own way, especially as it pertains to the gameplay and the art style and all that other stuff. You know, a lot of that even just has to do with playing the game itself. How, how quickly do the characters run and how does that affect your tempo choices? How intense is the combat and how does that affect sort of the way the drums are pounding or, or not? Um, so based on melee attacks and all that kind of stuff. So Pluto, I feel like we both drew inspiration from the past, but didn't try to quote it too literally. Yeah, I mean, that was by definition because the yeah. whole idea is that the yeah. game itself was ambitious in that it encompassed all of the characters and scenarios that yeah. start with the cabin and end up, you know. Uh, so I think that the idea was is that we had to do something that was sort of comprehensive and somehow remain true to the spirit of, of the music and 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 what steve was you know a master of doing is making sure that the players are engaged you know with 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 the gameplay itself and the way he describes it it's very much what a cinematic composer does you know you've got to look and see what's on the screen and support that so do you guys um prefer a certain medium i know uh joe you've done TV, film, you've kind of run the gamut, and Steve works in video games. Do you guys prefer like TV over film or video games over TV? Or like what's like your obvious favorite workflow to work in what formula? I really enjoy working on games. Um, I've done some film and TV, but that's more of a linear approach. So you're scoring to picture and it's the same every time, which is it. A, a beautiful art form to just find the right sound that's going to support the the on-screen action and emotion but something that i just love about games is the opportunity to create an adaptive score that changes based on the player's actions i i love the idea of there being different dynamic states you know combat boss swarm and i love the idea of breaking that music down into stems 
so you can create all these permutations and ha sort of have these modular building blocks within the core. And as you rearrange them in a way, you're never hearing the same soundtrack twice because you might have you know, combat brass one, two, three, four, five, and you can layer that with the strings one, two, three, four, five in any combination. So it's sort of interesting to me to approach that mathematical yet musical puzzle where everything has to be able to interact. So you're thinking about time signatures and tonics and sort of tempos and just putting the, the puzzle pieces together so that you create this sort of living, breathing score or soundtrack that has a life of its own. And a lot of times we randomize things within the game engine uh, for, for games like this. So there's a certain element of chance and that was also by design. I thought it would be really cool for the soundtrack to be a living, breathing entity, almost like one of the other characters within the game and have a sense of unpredictability. Um, and it's kind of like, again, you're exploring through the woods and it's like, you know, these iconic settings. And I wanted there to be a sense, not only of jump scares, but also just a what's coming next kind of a thing. And that was something else I took inspiration from within Joe's music is all these different dynamic changes and it can turn on a dime and, you know, sort of leads you down one path and, you realize it was all misdirection and then it makes a sharp turn. And I love those little moments of novelty. Uh, and I think it speaks to the Evil Dead franchise, just the fact that we are combining humor and adventure and horror and all these things. It's like, what is this? What what genre is this even? Well, it's all of them and it's none of them. And that's the fun of it for me. So first speak to Steve's medium as an outsider. What always seems intriguing to me about the game composer is that he's invited in so early in the process. So you get to make the world from the ground up, which often isn't the case in working both in film and in TV. You know, it's basically they send it to you and then you have to figure it out. It's not necessarily something that's talked about or worked on unless you're working with an auteur like a Wes Anderson or, you know, a Guillermo de Toro, but uh, generally speaking, that's not the way most of uh, my experience with television and film operates. For me, it comes down to the collaboration, what's going to be involved musically, and so much on the people that you're working with and their sensibilities. So, you know, how much your collaborative effort is, is really engaging. So if I can speak to early experiences working on Xena Warrior Princess, where it was complete crazy worlds from operatic melodrama to Three Stooges, as you know, to inventing cultures that didn't exist. Um, that's why you see all these instruments that were acquired, a lot of yeah. them probably during that time, uh, and other films like that. Moving on to Spartacus, where it was operatic choir and grandiose music, along with sort of heavy metal in the arena, uh, and then having sort of my Arabic Robert Plant wail over the top of that. It, it was kind of, uh, you know, those types of things where they're, you're, you're into more than one bag of tricks. You know, right now working on Chucky with Don Mancini, he's sort of the Martin Scorsese of horror because he's encyclopedic in his knowledge of, of those films, of that genre, of it, just about everything. And Loves Music is another example of a lot of things that can be referenced in a lot of different directions so you're not stuck in one box that's when it gets real exciting for me i know the feeling no that that, that was uh no that's really cool and i that was part of the fun of this collaboration for me was just hearing the sounds that joe brought to the table you know these unexpected sounds and the sound design and all that kind of stuff and we all have a lot of fun with that. I worked with some assistant composers on this, a gentleman named Ryan Liatsis and um, a group called Silent Skies, which is Tom England and Vikram Shankar. And Tom is that guitar player I was telling you about, Joe, yeah. who, and, and vocalist. And he did this almost, for one of the pieces, he did this almost throat singing style where he was reciting passages from the Book of the Dead. And it was just like, con. Uh, you know, these like deep growling, massive things. And by the time you add all the processing and stuff, it, you just get these otherworldly epic sounds that are unexpected and they feel organic, but the sound design kind of modernizes them a little. And that instrument that you playing that bowed guitar for, uh, for the melody in the main title was just so unexpected and perfect. I remember when you first sent that track to me to listen to, 
I remember just thinking, wow, that was such a cool choice. I, I would not have thought to do that with just the way you can art um, articulate the bowings and change, you know, switching the notes there mid bow. It's just really cool. Part of the, the fun of the discovery in, in these is you have a project and you go, what can I bring to it that makes it unique, you know? It's also interesting when in, in the video game space specifically is much different from film, like you've said, Joe and Steve, is because like, for example, like in the POV of the demon in the movies, it does that like, it's like a didgeridoo reverb or something as it as it flies, like it does that growl. I don't know what that, that's mm. the sound design, but it has that unique and works great in the films, would get very annoying in the game if I had to hear that constantly as I was just moving for 20 minutes and just the wah, like I'd be like, oh, that, turn it off. <laughs> that is something, I'll answer it as it pertains to the sound effects. That is something that we talked about during game development was how closely do we want to recreate that exact sound the, the sound of the force it's called the, the sound of the force the exactly. force I don't, I don't know why yeah so it's like how closely do we want to do that and at some point i i just started messing with some different sound design ideas because i've been doing all the the music and sound design for the trailers for this game as well um so and there there are a lot of those shots in there so it was kind of like, well, how derivative do we want to be? In a way, it's kind of this iconic sound. <laughs> On the other hand, it's cool to take that and do something different with it. And how does it feel now? But yeah, that that all those types of things are so so interesting. That well, the synth component of that original sound was a was one of the early Prophet Fives, which nice. I didn't own. I had to rent from a friend who who owned one. That's cool. And then for years after in a lot of synths that came out, there was always an evil dead patch, which That's was amazing. basically a rising drone. But, <laughs> uh, but you know- That's one the, of the greatest reason... compliment, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, it's almost That's like so getting cool. in the New York Times crossword puzzle. The idea behind it, and why I guess you couldn't use it in a game, is always, as it appears in the film, the whole idea is always to make it rise and come upon you and then smack jump cut. So that there's always that, it's nothing that you can, sustain forever that's the you know that's the impact of using that sound a, a fun question for you joe is uh, your name is spelled various ways <laughs> on multiple credits is is that like a mistake on like the credit writer's part where you trying to it's like because sometimes there's a space between your last name sometimes you're joe sometimes you're joseph like can you just like elaborate on that i'm just curious it, it all depends on who reads the contract i mean it's always spelled right in the contract <laughs> <laughs> you know on credits i prefer joseph and once you know me i'm joe it's easy. Uh, Loduka, I omitted the space early on because it was just more confusing. And, you know, there is no K in the Italian alphabet. And there's a more, way more Delucas than there are Loducas and Loducas. So we try. And when it's all caps, you just run it as all caps. Anyways, mystery is all. <laughs> this does mess with me because sometimes when I want to write a little note or something, and I'm just abbreviating if I if I was like when I was working on the notes, uh, you know, revisions for the game and the music or stuff, or I would want to drop you a little message, like a text or something, I would think I was always unsure. Should I abbreviate it JLD, JL, JD? <laughs> what is the role? How important is that low within the Laduca? So and I yeah, JLo was in, J -Lo was in fashion for a while. Yes, yeah, JLo. So did you say the official way to spell your name is Joseph Low then Space Duca, or is it Loduca okay. together? No, no space. No space, capital D. Okay, there you go. Mystery, like, problem solved. There you go. When I make a lower third, that's going to help me, actually, because I was just like, he spells his name different ways. <laughs> no, I don't. Other people do. I've always felt it the same way. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, obviously, like, you, all of Raimi's crew on the Evil Dead from Michigan, you're obviously born in Detroit. Like, I just, it's such an interesting, like, Detroit, not known for filmmakers, right? Not known, not, not the center of the industry, obviously, automotive industry, a lot of, a lot of car guys there, but not much film. Uh, what was it like growing up in, in Michigan, just doing this music as you were young, as you evolved? And when did, did you eventually have to move out to L.A. and like do the whole L.A. thing? Or what, My first experience doing music to picture was pretty much Evil Dead. Yeah, I was still in school uh, when I met them. And, and that was my first experience, really, writing the picture, was that. That was the first thing I ever did. Amazing. And to their second film, Sam, Rob, and Bruce moved out to L.A., and they had a house in Silver Lake, which wasn't fashionable at that <laughs> time. And it was a house with the Coen brothers and Fran McDormand and what? Kathy Bates. And right, they all shared a house. I remember reading about that, yeah. Yeah, they, they all shared a house there. But I didn't go. Um, I was still had 
thoughts of being a jazz musician and a performer. Also what happened was at that point, Detroit was the third largest market for advertising, largely because of the car companies were all here. The, the national accounts were all here. And so that's what really built my recording studios was doing that um, through the 80s as they were getting themselves established, you know, in LA. So I'd always worked remotely hmm. with the technology, with ISDN lines and- yeah. uh, ISDN and, lines, it, yeah. It, yeah. So, you know, working remotely as it became, you know, a necessity in the pandemic is nothing new to me. But we did, you know, I did spend the last seven years before the pandemic in LA, which was nice. This franchise has spanned generations. I mean, my dad showed it to me, like, I'll, you know, like it's, it's crazy how long this franchise has been around and how famous it's gotten with the cult following. Like, what's it been like to work on this game or just even see this franchise evolve over the last 30 years? Well, for me, it's the gift that keeps giving. You know, we are doing, Bruce is coming into town. We've done this, we've done this a couple times already. But he's coming in. He's coming into Detroit. He's calling it his homecoming, and they call him Bruce Cons. So he does some sort of three-day festival, and then we go even that. So the idea was to do a live to picture performance, uh, June 16th. So we've already done it in LA. Um, actually, did it in Melbourne before the pandemic, uh, and it's fun. You know, <clears throat> it comes around every Halloween, but in this case, it's midsummer. Uh, so it'll be fun. It'll be fun with. Uh, you know, with local players to do it here. In fact, I think the viola player was uh, is going to be the original viola player from the original sound. Wow. Jeez. When when is that happening? June sixteenth. June sixteenth. Yeah. And Bruce, of course, will abuse the crowd as always. <laughs> <laughs> He's so good at that. We be yeah. fun. It'll be he, fun. He I look was cracking to it. me up. His his banter on our you know, play through videos where he oh, was I can only imagine. Stuff. I can only imagine. He was imagine so funny. Those, yeah. Those, those and he's, he was so dry and deadpan with his, with everything he was saying. It's like, you have to, some of them you have to sit for a minute. Wait, was that, is he being serious right now? <laughs> is this guy messing with me? And uh, my discovery was 99% of the time he was messing with everyone, which was great. Of course. Of yeah, course. Yeah, he's a really good guy. Really yeah, he's, is. He's awesome. it's, it's funny. He's like a man's man too. Like he's not a nerd. Like I wouldn't call him a nerd at all. Like he's really like <laughs> No. No. No, no, no. Absolutely not. Hikes and so, car yeah. guy and works out and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like he's not like he's not like me. He's not like a dork. So it was a, it was a really joy just to talk to both of you today and a really big honor for me. So thank you so much. The game is looking great. You know, check it out Epic Game Store. I said all platforms May 13th, 39.99 which just it and do all that good stuff. Thank you guys so much for your time. I know you are both extremely busy uh, in this world of entertainment media. So I want to thank you for your time and hopefully I'll talk to you soon.